Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna switch it up a bit and I know, I know I am in the midst of a few product reviews right now, but I really need to take some time out and finish this project that I've been working on. And if you remember this little guy, this is my wide field deep sky imager. Basically I am shooting with a Rokinon 85 millimeter and a ZWO five position filter wheel. And this is a ZWO ASI 183 uh, camera as well. So mono. <laughs> but I've been getting some pretty nice shots out of this. The only thing that I hate about it is every time I need to take it out, I have to steal telescope rings and a dovetail and also a handlebar from my Z73. And I hate that because I don't know, I just, I just don't like taking it apart and putting it together. So we're going to make some telescope rings and a dovetail and also some way to mount the 120 mm mini and 30 millimeter guide scope to it. And what I'm thinking is mounting it off to the side a little bit like this. Because balancing, I'm thinking as it is, you know, facing the east, it's where I shoot most of the time. Um, it's just going to balance nicely. And also, I don't know if you've seen some builds, but some people will put a, and I mean, I did this too, telescope ring on the back and that's all the support it has. There's no supports on the front. So everything is weighted on the camera and I didn't like that either. So we're going to make some rings for the front here. That's what I'm thinking. And a ring here. And then mount my guide scope somewhere up here. But I think I'm going to need to keep the contour of that or is I going to try and keep the contour of this lens? So I think that's going to be pretty cool. I did make some test parts actually. And here is the front ring and they're hinged. And so they kind of go together like this. I think that's pretty cool. And it's going to look like that. And here's the back piece. I don't think I did too bad on this one. This is just a first go at it. And it just kind of follows the lens contour, as I said. Also, it's hinged here on the back. And for the hardware, I'll be using some 2.5 millimeter screws. And also these 2.5 millimeter nuts. This is just something that actually had around my place. And I think for attaching the dovetail to my rings, I'll use these quarter 20 bolts here. I think that's gonna be heavy duty enough, right? So what we need to do next is design some way to mount this to a dovetail. We're gonna design a dovetail and we're going to print it out, right? So as you know that I'm actually a 3D printer enthusiast and it's, it's kind of a hobby I've had because I'm in the RC hobby as well. So it's nice to have a 3D printer because most RC modelers like making their own parts. And that's kind of what I've been doing with my printer all these years. So this is the first time that I've made like something serious for astrophotography, but I think I can do it. So I saved you guys from the very tedious design process. Trust me, you'll thank me later. But check this out. Here is my parts all ready to go to get printed. And this actually took a while, but here is the back piece that I was talking about. For the lens it's actually this piece here 
and it turned out really nice. It was more complicated than I thought it would be. And as you can see, I threw threads in there. It's just going to be easier to thread bolts in there. Here is the front ring. And the only thing I need to do is put the uh, mounting block here on the front, which I will do. But it's very similar to the back ring. And again, I'm going to use a nut and press that in here. Here's my handlebar. And this is where I'm going to mount the 120 mm mini guide scope. 30 millimeter guide scope. <laughs> and I just put, just simply drop some holes in here for, you know, M6 bolt, I think what I'm going to use there, just to hold the guide scope in place. Here's my good old dovetail here. And this dovetail, I printed out a test dovetail. And here's the prototype. Uh, it was, it actually works really well. The only thing is it flex a little bit because of course this is plastic. And I also wanted a safety screw on the front of it too. So what I did was I marked where I was going to mount the camera and lens to and just filled in the rest. So when it's on my mount, uh, such as my AM5 or whatnot, it'll just have a lot more support to clamp down on. And this is what I came up with. Here's my safety screw here. And here's the bottom of that. And last but not least, I designed some knobs to bring it all together because I need some way to tighten these rings down onto the lens and here are here's just my knob I, it's just a simple piece and i think i'm going to use a i think it's a i think I, I am thinking about using an m6 bolt in there and i have it notched out exactly to fit that bolt so I won't have to use anything else. I can just press fit it in there and it'll just hang out there, which I think is pretty cool. Rounded it there on the bottom, as you see. And I think it's, I think that's gonna turn out pretty nice. At least I hope so. But the next thing we have to do is prep our 3D printer. All right, here is my machine. This is a Creality K1. This machine actually replaced an older machine that was 10 years old. I was just having problems finding the parts for it. So I replaced it with this, and this is actually a high-speed printer. Should I, I should be able to make stuff in a few hours. Right, let's turn this little guy on. And we're gonna be printing everything on this build plate here. And this is called a PEI sheet. It's very smooth, but the only thing we need to do is prep the surface. So what I like doing is I take some rubbing alcohol and my machine's already loaded with filament so I don't really need to load it and then I make sure the top of this is clean because any oils from your hands will kind of mess up the print you want to make sure that it adheres to the build plate, that's kind of one of the most important things. And then we're gonna use this glue stick as well to ensure all the prints stick to this plate. And we're just gonna go over the surface with this glue sheet or glue stick to ensure that. And look how fast that evaporates. It's awesome. Right. And you just do it like this.
And I like doing this too, this way. Alright. I'm going to put it back in here. And then we're going to send our files to this printer. Check this out. This is like my favorite thing to do. And it looks like that. Nice, right? Whew, that looks good. I pretty much spent all day on this, but I think it's worth it. Here's actually my, my kit. Look at the guide scope. Like I said, it's like right off to the center here. And here are my rings. Check that out. Isn't that cool? And there are the bolts here. And it's attached to this really nice dovetail. I chose the color black and space gray. Because, you know, why not? And here are my hinges. I think the hinges turned out really nice. The cool thing is, is I still have access to the aperture ring back here. And I also maintained smooth movement on the focuser here. So it's going to be really easy to focus. And speaking of that, I, I went for some extra credit and I made a Batnoff mask that fits on the edge of this thing. So really Really cool. Now I don't have to rob from my Z73. And this is just gonna live in here like this for the rest of its days. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me while I did this project. I really needed to get this done and it, you know, it's gonna make more sense to you guys why I'm doing this. I mean, I did get a Star Adventure GTI. This just seems like it'd be a nice little buddy parked alongside the AM5, you know what I'm saying? But I think that's a story for another day. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>